Sir James Nicholas Sutherland Matheson, 1st Baronet, FRS, the 17th of November 1796 to the 31st of December 1878, was a Scottish trader in India. Born in Shyness, Lairg, Sutherland, Scotland, he was the son of Captain Donald Matheson. He attended Edinburgh's Royal High School and the University of Edinburgh. He and William Jardine went on to co-found the Hong Kong-based trading conglomerate Jardine Matheson & Co., that became today's Jardine Matheson Holdings. China and Hong Kong After leaving university, Matheson spent two years in a London agency house before departing for Calcutta, India and a position in his uncle's trading firm, Macintosh & Co. In 1807, Matheson was entrusted by his uncle with a letter to be delivered to the captain of a soon-to-depart British vessel. He forgot to deliver the missive and the vessel sailed without it. Incensed at his nephew's negligence, the uncle suggested that young James might be better off back in Britain. He took his uncle at his word and went to engage a passage back home. However, a chance encounter with an old sea captain instead led to Matheson departing for Canton Guangzhou. Matheson first met William Jardine in Bombay in 1820. The two men later formed a partnership which also included Hollingworth Magniac and Daniel Beale. At first the new firm dealt only with trade between Canton, Bombay and Calcutta, at that time called the «country trade» but later extended their business to London. In 1827 Alexander Matheson lent James a small hand press for the printing of the Canton Register which James founded as the first English-language news sheet in China, which was edited by William Whiteman Wood, an American from Philadelphia who would later work for rival trading house Russell & Co. On 1 July 1832 Jardine, Matheson & Company, a partnership, between William Jardine, James Matheson as senior partners, and Hollingworth Magniac, Alexander Matheson, Jardine's nephew Andrew Johnston, Matheson's nephew Hugh Matheson, John Abel Smith, and Henry Wright, as the first partners was formed in Canton, and took the Chinese name Ewo Yiwo, literally Happy Harmony. The name was taken from the earlier Ewo Hong founded by Haokua which had an honest and upright reputation. In 1834, Parliament ended the monopoly of the British East India Company on trade between Britain and China. Jardine, Matheson and Company took this opportunity to fill the vacuum left by the East India Company. With its first voyage carrying tea, the Jardine ship Sarah left for England. Jardine Matheson began its transformation from a major commercial agent of the East India Company into the largest British trading Hong, or firm, in Asia from its base in Hong Kong. Jardine wanted the opium trade to expand in China and dispatched Matheson to England to lobby the government to press the Qing government to further open up trade. Matheson's mission proved unsuccessful and he was rebuked by the then British Foreign Secretary the Duke of Wellington. In a report, Matheson complained to Jardine over being insulted by an «arrogant and stupid man». Matheson expressed his views plainly, contemporaneously describing, the Chinese as a people characterized by a marvelous degree of imbecility, avarice, conceit and obstinacy. Matheson returned to Asia in 1838 and the following year Jardine left for England to continue lobbying. Jardine's lobbying efforts proved more effective than his partners and he succeeded in persuading the new British Foreign Secretary Lord Palmerston to wait Wage war on Qing China. The subsequent First Opium War led to the Treaty of Nanking which allowed Jardine Matheson to expand from Canton to Hong Kong and mainland China. After Jardine died a bachelor in 1843, his nephews David and Andrew Jardine assisted James Matheson in running the Hong as Taipan. Matheson retired as Taipan during the early 1840s and handed over to David Jardine, another nephew of Jardine.
Topic: Society for the Diffusion of Useful Knowledge in China. On 29 November 1834, Matheson became chairman of the newly formed Society for the Diffusion of Useful Knowledge in China. The committee members represented a wide section of the business and missionary community in Canton, David Oliphant, William Wetmore, James Innes, Thomas Fox, Elijah Coleman Bridgman, Carl Gutsliff and John Robert Morrison. John Francis Davis, at that time Chief Superintendent of British Trade in China, was made an honorary member. Topic return to Scotland Matheson married Mary Jane Percival on 9 November 1843. Her father, Michael Henry Percival (1779–1829), was the illegitimate son of assassinated British Prime Minister Spencer Percival, Commissioner of the Port of Quebec from 1826, and a member, from Spencer Wood, of the Legislative Council of Lower Canada. The Mathesons had no children. Matheson bought the Scottish Isle of Lewis in 1844 for over half a million pounds and built Lewes Castle, near Stornoway, and cleared more than 500 families off the land, shipping them to Canada. He went on to become the governor of the Bank of England and the second largest landowner in Britain. Date equals 2006, page equals 50. In 1845, he began a program of improvements on the island, including drainage schemes and road construction. He increased the program during the Highland Potato Famine and by 1850 had spent £329,000 on the island. Between 1851 and 1855 he assisted 1,771 people to emigrate. When in London Matheson lived at 13 Cleveland Row. He was elected a Fellow of the Royal Society in 1846. As a result of his actions during the Highland Potato Famine, Matheson was awarded a baronetcy in 1851. He became Member of Parliament MP for Ashburton from 1843 to 1852 on William Jardine's death, the previous incumbent and for Ross and Cromarty from 1852 to 1868. He led an active public life into his eighth decade, and for many years served as Chairman of the Peninsular and Oriental Steam Navigation Company. His nephews succeeded him in directing Jardine Matheson and Matheson and Company. Matheson died in 1878 at the age of 82 in Menton, France, upon which his wife erected a memorial to him in the grounds of Lewes Castle. He left £1,500 to help pay for the construction of the harbour at Port of Ness. The baronetcy became extinct on his death. 